In the body, there are two main hypersensitivity disorders. Type 1 disorders are IgE-mediated and are generally known as allergic reactions. We will be discussing hypersensitivity type 2 disorders, which are caused when IgG or IgM antibodies mistakenly attack the host cell. Normally, when the MHC1 receptor displays self, this prevents host cells from being attacked due to the body's natural self-tolerance. However, in the hypersensitivity type 2 response, the host cells still present self, but the normal recognition system fails, and the host cells are viewed as foreign and attacked by the antibodies known as autoantibodies. The theory is that autoantibodies then attack the specific host cell, resulting in its malfunction. There can be endocytosis, where the host cell engulfs its own receptor and then redistributes the proteins. Phagocytosis, when there is antibody opsonization of the receptor, triggering the macrophage to destroy it. Antibody-mediated inflammation of the tissue, which activates the complement system. Or there can be dysfunction or blockage of the targeted cell, which is when the antibodies sit on the receptors and block them. There are a few hypotheses as to why this occurs. One theory is that this can happen because the body has been exposed to a virus or bacteria, which is structurally similar to a receptor on the host cell. The memory cells then activate when they are exposed to these similar host cells, and the antibodies then attack the healthy host cell. Another hypothesis is the idea of T-cell tolerance. If there is a T-cell which shows a high affinity for host cells, it is normally destroyed. However, if it is not, it is free to join the antigen-presenting cell, B-cell, T-helper cell complex, and cause the creation of autoantibodies. Normally, when you want to move any part of your body, your brain stimulates a neuromuscular pathway, which results in the desired movement. On a cellular scale, this stimulation is passed along the neural pathway from one neuron to the next. Once this signal reaches the end of that pathway, the neuromuscular junction, the final neuron releases its synaptic vesicles filled with ACH into the synaptic cleft. Once present in the synaptic cleft, the ACH binds to the ACH receptors concentrated in the folds of the end plate of the muscle fiber. This stimulation initiates action potential in the muscle cell, resulting in activation of the appropriate motor units and causing the desired action. Myasthenia gravis, or MG, is an example of a type 2 hypersensitivity disorder. In this disorder, there are autoantibodies created, which specifically denature or block the acetylcholine receptors. When a person has MG, the neural axon is still stimulated to release the vesicles containing ACH into the synaptic cleft. While exactly what triggers MG is unclear, as mentioned before, the hypothesis is that the helper T cells play a prominent role due to being incorrectly sensitized. The created autoantibodies block some of the acetylcholine receptors and destroy others by causing the deep folds of the muscle fiber end plate to retract, thus widening the synaptic space. The result of these changes is that there are fewer receptors for acetylcholine to bind onto and it takes longer for the acetylcholine to reach them. With less acetylcholine binding to the muscle fiber, there are fewer stimuli resulting in increased time until the muscle fiber reaches threshold. Also, with fewer acetylcholine receptors, there are fewer sodium channel gates opened, causing delayed depolarization and action potentials. With fewer action potentials, there are fewer motor units being stimulated. This is shown through the symptom of muscle weakness. Finally, with each consecutive release of ACH, there is less ability to re-stimulate the muscle because of the relative refractory period and hyperpolarization of the muscle fiber. This is shown through the symptom of fatigability. The different presentations of MG are dependent on where in the body the affected acetylcholine receptors are located. MG often involves ocular impairment, such as asymmetric ptosis and double vision, as well as difficulty with sustained gaze.
There can also be difficulty sustaining a closed mouth. The person can open their mouth easily, but often must use their hand to keep the jaw closed. These same muscles also impact the ability to smile, which results in the characteristic myasthenic snarl. Another symptom could be progressive weakness during physical activities. An example of this would be the inability to maintain extended arms. In summary, myasthenia gravis is an example of a hypersensitivity type 2 disorder, which is characterized by an antibody-mediated attack on the host's own cells. The signs and symptoms of this disease, painless muscle weakness and fatigability, show the effects of the antibodies preventing acetylcholine from reaching its target receptors on the muscle fiber.